Hi, my name is Arun Prasad Nadrasan and I was born in France to Sri Lankan Tamil parents and um, when I was born in France I was able to do judo at the age of seven uh, because judo was the top three sport in France. With my sisters we also did Bardinajan classes. At the beginning it was only my two sisters, younger sisters, Kamisia and Sugenya. By watching them while I'm sitting on the side, I felt that Bardinatum was such a beautiful art form and I wanted to try it. And that's when I decided to do Bardinatum at the age of 11. And I did it for two years. But because I was in my growth spurt, I was getting a lot of knee pain because I was growing really fast during that time. And um, when I moved to UK, I kind of gave up on Bardinatum to focus on Judo. Was able, where I was able to gain my black belt at the age of uh, 18. When I went to university at the Society Fair for Pharmacy, there was a club called Break for Bat Uni Breakers, which is a breaking society. And I was passionate to learn how to spin in my shoulder, in my head, thanks to the music video of T. Pudike with Aria. This is what inspired me to dance. Um, street dance essentially. What I loved about the first class for break dancing was the people that were so friendly and welcoming. I almost felt part of a community instantly and the more experienced dancers would give me feedback on how I could do my first move, give me some brief outline. It would take me about three months to learn that move, just the moves spinning on your shoulder, the windmill. So I was really keen to put the extra hour every night coming back from lecture to practice a drill that I learned from the break, breaking classes. But then, as I was doing it, I noticed that it was putting a, a strain on my knee and I got an injury from that as a result. So I had to kind of uh, take a break from breaking. And um, whilst I was doing my break, I came across the Afro-Caribbean Society show and it was mainly upper body movement, like, like hip hop and house. And I felt that something I could do which won't have any strain on my leg. And um, whilst we're rehearsing, during the break, we went to watch a video on YouTube, and it was a crumb video. And I said, wow, so it moves so fast, there's so much energy and passion, it's raw. I've never seen tears before. Like, have you meant to do tears like tonight? I said, no, 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 don't worry, we're just watching because it's quite a beautiful um, art form and it's quite cool to watch. I said, wow, I want to move like them. So on the same day in April 2008, went home, typed in Chrome tutorial on YouTube, and um, it was an eight minute video where I was able to do my first Chrome drill in my bedroom, and I practiced, I think, for three hours. It was really hard work, but I loved the energy it gave off. Many people didn't really understand what was cramped. They would see it and say, why are you moving your arms so quickly? I don't understand it. And then I would explain to them that that's how the dance style is. It's raw emotion. You don't need to look pretty. It's just all about expressing your emotion the way it is with no restraint. And um, so I felt lots of negativity saying, why are you doing cramped? Why, why don't you continue doing break dancing? Why, like this is a breaking society. It's not a cramped society. But I said, no, I fell in love with Chrome. Uh, I don't want to do breaking anymore, I want to focus on Chrome. So I was able to go to Bristol to meet uh, my first mentor in Chrome called Yoshi. He was from China and he's been doing it Chrome since 2003. And he showed me a combo, which means a combination of movement sequence. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. I want to be, move, to be able to move like him. So then I would be able to commit frequently from Bath to Bristol to come go and learn from him and train with him. I decided to go to India to go and visit my student which I used to teach on Skype. So my first student was um, Abhishek Das and my second student was Shubhaga Gowande. And when I went there I was able to teach 55 people in Mumbai on how to teach Chrome and I said I want to use my money from my pharmacist wages to invest into the development of Indian crop. 
and this was also the time I met Jaya in November 2014 and like he was telling me Aaron you should compete in Nada Naraja I was like what is Nada Naraja and like he said yes yeah, it's a Tamil TV show for dancers you should come and represent Chrome you've been doing it for like nice six years you got to represent because if you don't somebody else will I said like, okay Jaya I'll take part so I did my audition got past the audition then got past the semi-final then to the pre-final and finally to the final which was which happened in April 2006 17 in Wembley SSC Arena in front of 10,000 people and for me to go from being in my bedroom to actually perform in front of 10,000 people with four highly recognized people within the dance industry and acting industry was priceless. <laughs> And um, for this, I'm so grateful that my parents were very supportive of my ambition to pursue Chrome and invest money in Chrome rather than investing it in buying a house, buying a car. And I had the privilege also during that time frame between 2013 and 2014. I went to several events. I was one, I was going to as many events as I could. One of my best memories was Japan for an event called King of Buck in um, in Tokyo and it was so funny because I turned up and there was the only Tamil guy there everybody else was Japanese and they look at me but they saw, saw her like um, welcoming saying oh hi you came all from UK congratulations welcome to Japan and um, also my other trip which I really value is Venezuela so for me to go from UK to South America to go and visit one of my students I used to teach on Skype was priceless. It kind of reminded me on how lucky we are in Europe to have a roof over our head, to have food on our table, to have um, peace almost because in Venezuela it was so much... The economic trouble there is very very bad. So even for food, sometimes people have to go for days for just one portion of food. And they're so welcoming, they were giving me food that they would spend weeks to save because they felt that I was a very important guest. And for this, that was a priceless experience. Even to this day, I still keep contact with my student there. And when I see somebody from Venezuela need advice in the crop, I just tell them free of charge on how to improve it because um, crop really helped me to open my mindset that life is not just about going to education, getting a degree, going to job 9 to 5, retire and then just do nothing. Crown helped me to find out that you can move to other countries, meet different people, have magical experience, have a taste at entrepreneurship, running events, um, meeting people that have so little but yet have so much. I remind you that life on earth can be short and it's best to value each experience and traveling through Chrome as what enabled me to kind of welcome the experience I mean I'm 29 now many people ask me like Aaron why are you not getting married like you should get married by now you should have a house you should have a car and I said I know but I mean Chrome has helped me to open up I want to spend more time with dance Chrome before I settle down even if I do settle down, I still continue to crump because crump is part of me. I was actually able to set up a charity called Crump Save Lives, which is present in 13 countries where I have a lot of friends there to act as ambassadors and um, if I didn't have Chrome I don't think I would have had the courage to write my book on pharmacy and dance because one of the things that Chrome teach you is about grit and determination like for instance I spent 16 months writing my book from idea to having it in my hand for my book launch 
and I faced so much negativity from the pharmacy community, from um, the health community saying, who are you trying to book on pharmacy and dance? Like you don't have any, uh, you're not a professor, you don't have any research paper under your belt, you're just a young pharmacist. But I said to myself, no, I still write the book, I want to do it. Who are you to tell me I can't do it? I'm a cramper. I've been to many countries, don't know the rich experience I've gained from dancing. So just because you have your tight bubble of um, negativity, it won't affect me. I still do it. And after six months, I'm grateful to say that I have a signed copy of my book at the end of the Prime Minister. Uh, the Queen has acknowledged my book. Um, the Mayor of London, Sadi Khan, has a copy of my book. I was invited to go to Paris to give a speech on pharmacy and dance where I briefly talked about Crump as well and this would have never happened if I didn't have a book and this wouldn't have happened if I didn't have Crump but then it stemmed back that my first experience of dancing was Baden Atium which was through my sister but then through my parents so I'm so grateful for my parents for supporting me both in education and passion also sending us to judo when many people would spend the money on tuition fee rather than doing sports. Like honestly, I'm so grateful for my mother and father to work so hard. Being immigrant, going from Sri Lanka to France, work so hard for our education. I'm a pharmacist now. Can you see I see a doctor and now a GP? Uh, my younger sister Sugenia is a pharmacist. And many people say is wow, you should your parents should will be very proud and I say yes, definitely. They inspired us to work so hard. And I must aspire to share this positivity, positivity to Crom. So that's why I've set up a virtual university called Crom World University, where I teach Crompers about entrepreneurship, how to run events, about the mindset of positive thinking. Because many people who do Crom tend to not have a a situation in their life they're happy with and they're using Crump as an outlet but I want to enable them to be able to gain valuable skill set to elevate their life and wealth And I decided to keep continuing Crump whilst working as a pharmacist. And I had the privilege to do my first Crump for Parkinson class, which is a class for Parkinson patients using Crump in June 2017. And this kind of gave me a vision that Crump can be not just to a dance, but it can also be a therapy for senior citizens to kind of uh, reduce social isolation and loneliness and um, so yeah my future project in the pipeline my aim right now because Crump is present in 95 countries is to make Crump a multi-billion dollar industry by 2027 so what I mean by that this is known as moonshot thinking because I'm also a member of the World Future Society a Singularity U London chapter and they help you to think much bigger and um, so that's definitely my next step and also have the Tamil Crump movement in London hopefully through the help of different Tamil artists maybe like Jaya or anybody that would like to support me in creating and dancing for Tamil Crumpers in London so yes um, thank you for listening and, uh, yeah. <laughs>